So welcome to this session where we're going to talk about the Easy Batch Block tool which comes as part of the Power Pack for Advanced Steel from Greytech. The command is found under the Manage panel of the Power Pack ribbon. Look for Batch Plot. Selecting the Batch Plot command, a dialog screen will appear in front of you. One thing to remember is if you have your current model open that you're going to use to do your batch plot drawings from, it will actually access the model tokens available that actually link into the page header detail. Also, the option is available that it uses the attributes that are based within the drawing. Uh, if you have the model open, you do get more attributes than if you just have the drawing because it will only access the current attribute list in the drawing. So how do we use this? So the first thing we would do is come down to here and go add files. So what I'm going to do is add a series of files which are from the model in the background here. And you can see that I highlighted certain elements in red here and I've produced a series of single parts and assemblies and GA drawings for that. So I did some cameras as well, ran a couple of camera processes. So you can select all the files. You don't have to select individual files. And once you've done that, you can see that they appear within the file list window below. And now you can set about using the various filtering options that we have in here to filter down the drawings available that you wish to plot. So let's come here and change to layout tab. And then we can come here to the apply filters button and you can see now that we've removed all the model space drawings views from the list. So with the layout tab left, we can now come to the next step here and we can filter by the drawing type, which is assembly. So we can select assembly and it will just list the assembly drawings. And then similarly, you can come into here as well and you can actually decide upon which size drawing you wish to filter by, by unchecking some boxes. And now you can see that we just have A3 size drawing selected. So again, if you decided that you wanted to do maybe part drawings and assembly drawings, just to check to see if there was any A3 drawings of that size, you can see here that we have some single parts as well that are A3 size. So again, you could print all these drawings at an A3 size if you so wish. So one of the other things you can do also is that um, it's renaming the files. And by that, we mean that the, the tab here, you can change the text available within this entity. So if we go copy here, and if we come down into our naming panel here and paste it in there, you can edit or add or remove text as you wish in here. So if I type test in there, you'll see that it's added that on, but I'm just gonna take it out again. Also, you can put back in the particular token reference that you may wish to use. So in this case, I'm gonna scroll through the available list of tokens, which you can see is quite extensive. And I'm actually looking for main part position number. So where I had the cursor within the string, it's obviously inserted that token. What I can do is because I have a mixture of files here, I have assemblies and single parts because I didn't filter just to assemblies in the end. I can use my shift key and I can select a group of files here. So I've highlighted those and then I can use the apply naming button. That will apply the naming to those files and you can see all the part numbers or the assembly numbers have been maintained. Now similarly, I can come back down into here. I could select this string under here. I could copy it. I'm just gonna clean that out in there by selecting it. And then I'm gonna paste that string into there. And I'm gonna do a similar thing here. I'm gonna clean up this advanced steel part on the end here. And I'm going to replace the single part number with a token. So again, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use single part position number. I'm gonna place that within the string and I'm going to select a series of files, just using my shift key and selecting the last one at the bottom, then apply the naming. So you can see the files have been renamed. We've kept the, the reference that's been used before, the naming convention that was required, but we've removed the element that was not needed. 
What you can do also, if you decide that you might want to reprint this list at some later date or pull it back up again, you can actually store a list. You'll see these two buttons at the top. One is select list and one is save list. This is an AutoCAD DSD file. And you can see that we've been in here before and obviously created a file already today. So we're going to go in and we're going to create a new file here. Test list A3, single part, main part. And we're just going to save that. You'll now see that changes in the list. You will see there's a list of other files and there. Selecting that will change away from this current loaded series of drawings. So at the point now where we come down and we will select the publish button. Selecting the publish button will actually launch you into the AutoCAD publish command, which is their version of the batch plot. You now have all the functionality that is available within this. So for example, you can come into the publish options here and you can select a multi-sheet file or unchecking it will produce single sheet files. I'm going to leave it checked as multi-sheet file. We also have options down here. So all the options that you would normally see within this, you have options for the plot stamp. So if you're using plot stamps, you can set those up within the system. And an important option is that I saw before was I was actually going to enable the background publishing as well, which you can't do under the current ones available within Advanced Steel. So let's just take a look. So we can don't have to really select anything else in here. We don't have to do that. We have all the files in there. If you wanted to select a file, you see all the same sort of information that you would see under the AutoCAD. Obviously, the printer is set to default. We've got uh, AutoCAD high quality PDF sat in there. So the next thing we would do is press the publish command down here. You'll be prompted for a name. So I'm going to change the name. I'm going to obviously put a two in there because I did one earlier on today as a test. And we're going to select that. Now you can see it says your job is publishing or processing in the background will pop up in front of you. It doesn't always, if you've ticked this, it won't appear. I've left it there so I can demonstrate it today. So with that, we can now see that down in the system tray, down in the bottom of the drawing here, the job is, job is being published. It's in progress down there. And you can check that icon down there for regular updates and it will prompt you when it's finished. Similarly, you could continue to work in the model if you so wished. So if you wanted to go and take a look at one of the elements that you'd already created, for example, or you wanted to move on and do something else, you could continue to work within the model and the drawings are being processed in the background as per standard functionality. So I'm just going to zoom back out again. You can't commence another batch plot operation at this point. We just have to wait for the batch process to complete. As I said, you can return down into the systems tray and you can see the progress of what's going on there. So with that, we can now see that the system tray, the batch process is completed. It's popped up down in the corner of the drawing here under the system tray option. When we select that, you can see the status of the drawings that have been published, plotted from the original series of drawings that we selected. So where did the drawings get stored? So what happens is, is when we actually come into here, you can actually come into your particular model folder. You can browse here and you'll see that there's a new folder will be added called printed documents. And under here is where the batch plot drawings are saved automatically to. That folder is automatically added to the system on the initiation of the publish dialog to the AutoCAD publish option. So within here, we can see what's going on. We can see that uh, all the different sheet views have been added. You can see that the sheet names have been added in there correctly, even though we're in a multiple sheet file. We can still see that every single element has been added. And obviously you can see the drawings have been created. 
and they're all within the single PDF file as required. So just returning to the model again. So again, you can come back in and let's say we want to select a list so we can go back in and select that list again and we can open that up and it will reload the drawings again. It's a little bit more limited in this because now you actually only have the information that was stored within that list. But you could again republish the drawings if someone came back to you and said, hi, can I have another set of drawings? You can come back into here, come back to the publish options and replot the drawings again. Just coming back into the dialogue here again. I just wanted to um, add some files again and show a couple of other options. As before, we just uh, added everything in quite quite quickly. So I'm just going to come back in and I'm going to add everything back in again. But what you can do is, for example, we're just going to come come in here. Let's go. We're going to leave this on model and layout. Maybe just select assembly. Filter that down. So now we've just got assembly drawings in there. But what you can do is if you decided you didn't actually want the assembly drawings in there, what you could do is actually select them and actually use the, um, the options up here to delete or add a file. So this option here, remove file. And that will actually remove them from the series of drawings that you inserted. So if you come back in here and select the other checkboxes here and then rerun the filter again, you'll see that the GAs are now listed within the drawings and also the single parts as well. You can, of course, individually remove a file if you so wish, just by selecting that and then going delete here, remove file. So I've taken out both of those. If you decided that you wanted actually a file to be in a different place, you can actually move it up or move it down. So using these options here, you can move a particular or series of files up. That is an individual operation. So again, I probably just want to move that back down actually. So I'm going to put that back down to where it was before. Just going to select that and move it back down. And similarly again, Let's come back in here and we're just going to under, unselect those two elements there and just leave GA. We're obviously going to leave all the sheet sizes selected so we can now just see that we've got GA drawings in here and actually I only want the layout tab so I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to apply the filter again. So again I've got another series of drawings and yes I'd like to uh, change, change the name of these again. So I'm going to copy that, I'm going to come down into here, I'm going to paste that into there, I'm going to remove that element there, I'll probably take off the A1 off the end as well and just leave the bracketed bit here. Let's get rid of that, come back into the tokens and we're going to look for drawing number, which is obviously a different token used typically for GAs. I'm actually going to come out and remove the highlighting so I'm going to apply the naming to all the GA files and you can see they've all been renamed there. I'm going to go publish again. They've loaded in there <clears throat> and I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to change this to a single sheet file just by changing that option in there. And then we're going to go publish. Again the background publish option comes up we can see the icon down here in the system tray. So we just again need to wait for that to complete. And when that process is complete, we can take a look at that PDF file. So again, we can see the plot publishes appeared. We can just check the status of what's happened there. We can see that all the drawings have been plotted. We can close that dialog. We can come back down into here. 
And now we can see under our printed documents we have all the individual GA files that have been created. Obviously you can see the name there. Just minimize that down. So that was the easy batch plot which comes as part of the power pack for advanced steel that enables you to select a series of files, change their names and process them into the AutoCAD publish command.